Hey everyone, this is Paul and today we're going to talk about Windows 11. What's new, what I like, and whether you should get it or not when it comes out on October 5th. According to Windows Update, this is the latest version of Windows 11 beta as of today. So with all that said, let's get started with themes. To get to themes, you right click on your desktop and you choose personalize. So right now I'm using dark mode, but you could not only use light mode, but you could choose your own color. For example, if I click on glow theme, notice how not only my taskbar, but also my windows itself changed color. So I think that's pretty cool. But for now, I'll stick with dark theme and close out of this. All right, so let's start with the start menu. The first thing you'll notice is how I moved all my icons to the left in the taskbar. I'll show you how to do that in a bit, so make sure to stick around. So when I click on the start menu, the first thing you'll notice is how there are no more tiles, which is great because I hated it anyway. The thing I love is how we're back to the simple icons. And it kind of gives you this mobile app feeling. You have your main apps on the home screen and when you want to see all your apps, you just click all apps. And then you have your search bar moves up here instead of in the task bar like in Windows 10. And that's pretty much it for the start menu. So from here, let's go to this PC. So I'll double click on this PC and end up on this screen. The first thing you'll notice is how all the folder has their own set of icons, which I think looks really nice. The menu bar is completely redesigned, which once again, I think looks really nice. And on the windows itself, you can kind of notice how the edge is now rounded. That's because Windows 11 introduced rounded edges. At first, I thought I would hate it, but honestly, I think it looks nice and it blends in really well. There is also snapping. So if you hover over to the maximize button, you have this floating window pop up and there you can basically choose where you want to snap this window. I think this is a cool feature, but personally, I don't really see myself using it too much. So let's get out of here and go back to desktop. So if I right click on the desktop, the first thing you'll notice is how the menu bar got a redesign. And the thing that's most exciting to me is open in Windows Terminal. Which is probably a weird thing to get excited about. But if you're a programmer, Linux user, or someone who works with Terminal a lot, this is a really great change because the font looks amazing. And they really improved their syntax highlighting. They also added tabs. So most people won't care about this, but personally, I'm very happy for this. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Taskbar. First thing first, I'll show you how to move all your icons to the left if that's something you want to do. Basically, all you do is right click on your taskbar and choose taskbar settings. Then you want to scroll all the way down until you see taskbar behaviors. Click on that and where it says taskbar alignment, you can choose left or center. Now that we're here, I want to talk about badges, which basically means your apps would show numbers based on how many unread notification it has. And speaking of taskbar, let's go see widgets. So to open widgets, all you do is click on this blue icon that says widget when you hover over it. When you click on it, this window opens up and basically it shows you more of your notification, news, weather, or whatever you want to customize it to. And that's pretty much it. So let's go see settings next. To get to your settings, you first click on your start menu and type settings. And then you click on the settings app. The first thing I notice is how it kind of feels like Android. The icons are colorful, so they're nicer to look at and easier to distinguish. To modify any of the settings, 
you basically click on the parent setting and then the child setting. There are tons of things you can configure here, so feel free to explore when you get the chance. Next, we'll look at Microsoft Store. To open Microsoft Store, again, just go into your Start menu and choose Microsoft Store icon. So the first thing I notice is it has a new UI. There's tabs, and eventually Android apps will be coming. You could also eventually download .exe apps, not just Windows Store apps. And that's all I can say so far, but I am really excited about downloading just .exe apps from the store. Okay, so let's get out of here. So that's pretty much the main UI and app changes that I've noticed so far. And now let's talk about the feature updates. So for feature updates, I haven't noticed too many big feature updates, but the few that I noticed are number one, Microsoft Team Chat which now comes installed as a default on Windows 11. The second one is Auto HDR for gaming, which basically improves the color and contrast of your games. Number three is much better touch compatibility with touchscreen laptops and tablets. Number four, I believe there was also improvements on Windows update process itself, but I couldn't really find more info on that. So as a reminder, this gets released on October 5th. The question is, would I get it as soon as it's released? And the answer is no, not yet. As great as it looks, I'll be waiting a few months before installing it. And the reason for that is because anytime something big gets released, usually there are tons of bugs in it. That's why the first few months, companies like Microsoft releases a bunch of critical updates to fix all of those bugs. After a few months, it should be much more stable and I think that will be a great time to get it since you avoid a bunch of headaches trying to fix something that's not working. Also, starting 2023, there is a rumor that Microsoft is going to require all laptops to have a webcam, which I'm not really sure of, so I'm waiting for more info on that. Also, there is a TPM 2.0 requirement, which basically means your laptop could be five years old, but if it doesn't have a approved Windows 11 processor, they're not going to let you install Windows 11 on it. So I need more clarification on that too. And lastly, one of the major thing I want to see is a benchmark. If I don't see one, I'm going to do one myself, but I want to know how much of a performance I'm sacrificing getting all these new themes, UIs and designs. And that's pretty much it so far for Windows 11. I'll be keeping up to date on it when it gets released. While we wait for that, if you guys want to speed up your Windows 7 or 10 PC to run as fast as possible, and I mean faster games, faster browsing the web, better battery life, and basically increase the lifespan of your PC, then check out Pegasun System Utilities, a completely free version is available and it will basically perform a full maintenance on your PC so that it runs like brand new or even faster than that. To get it, head over to pegasun.com. That's P-E-G-A-S-U-N.com. Download, install, and run the program. Then click on one-click maintenance and choose analyze and optimize. Restart your PC and notice the performance gains. And that's it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, and comment below on what you'd like to see more of. Thanks guys, till next time.